Good evening. I'm Kavita Karki and you're watching Emerging SME, a television program which highlights the success stories of micro, small and medium enterprises. On the show today, we have Great Sports Infra, the leading sports infrastructure company. Technocrat Connectivity Systems, one of the reputed manufacturers of wiring harness in the country. And Neptunus Power, the global engine service and solution provider for the offshore, industrial, marine and mining sectors. Let's start with the story of Great Sports Infra, South Asia's leading provider of turnkey solutions for sports infrastructure. It was started in the year 2004 by introducing next-generation long-pile artificial grass for sports and landscaping to India, and I have come a long way since then. I caught up earlier with Mr. Anil Kumar, the Managing Director of Great Sports Infra, who is a pioneer in introducing next-generation products for sports in this region. Take a look. What is your core area of competence and also tell us about the major product portfolio held by Great Sports Infra. Um, I would say the core competence or you know what we are well known for and what we believe is uh, really something that we have been well recognized for is uh, the fact that we are able to bring in game changing technologies to the sports infrastructure industry. I mean like I mentioned the artificial turf, the new generation artificial turf that which we were the first to introduce in India was very different from what was there in the past which needed you know watering and sprinkler system and which could use be only for which could be used only for one sport unlike that the new generation artificial turf you know it could be used for any grass based sport it could also be used for non sports usage and now school playgrounds and uh, you know even landscaping everybody uses including the fifa standard football fields okay. but using that as a base we went on to add other innovative products you were asking about the product portfolio uh, we do, of course, do a lot of the conventional sports infrastructure like hockey fields and athletic tracks in stadiums. But the innovations have come by way of, for example, we have introduced a new technology for cricket stadiums. We are right now doing a first of its kind uh, uh, outfield renovation for the Bangalore uh, Chinnaswamy Stadium, which will be the first cricket stadium in the world to be moving to a 21st century kind of an outfield with an automated uh, drainage and suction system and, you know, with uh, embedded sensors and an aeration system. So you will see in a couple of months why that would be completely changing uh, what what cricket outfields will be. Similarly, we have introduced other products and technologies. You know, we, we have something as a substitute for concrete uh, indoor stadiums. We have introduced a membrane-based uh, you know, a dome, which completely reduces the time. Like we can do it in one-fifth the time and maybe one-fourth the cost. We also are um, uh, promoting uh, modular stands. So you don't need to, in a stadium, build these huge concrete galleries that take up tens of crores, actually, which make a bulk of the investment in a sports stadium, yeah. which again, we are able to do at a fraction of the cost and time. Mm -hmm. More recently, we also introduced a, a turf protection system for stadiums. Okay. Typically, if you see in a cricket stadium or in most of the stadium, it's hardly used for about 15 days in a year. In the other 350 days, we don't want a huge investment like that, a big asset, you know, lying idle. And there are ways to monetize it and to you know, generate revenues without damaging the turf. So internationally, people do, you know, acknowledge that stadiums cannot be economically viable with just one sport, you know, using it for 15 days. So you should be able to use the stadium for non-sport events without damaging the turf. So these turf protection systems also we have now started with our first project in Ahmedabad with Transtadia. So these are just examples of how we are bringing in various technologies that we want to change the economics and dynamics of the sports infrastructure. Which all are the projects undertaken by a Great Sports Infra, both in India and abroad? Um, like I mentioned, we did start with artificial turf, with field turf, but um, over the years we have graduated on to a wide spectrum of uh, sports infrastructure solutions. So uh, we have done, like I mentioned, some of the key projects with the artificial turf uh, for football, like the Salt Lake Stadium or the Chagulay College, the first ever FIFA standard field. We also used the same uh, field turf for uh, the national games last year held in Kerala to do a FIFA standard field and quite a few other installations. We also do hockey fields with turf. Uh, last year, we again installed for uh, the World Hockey League that was held in Raipur. But outside of turf itself, we do athletic tracks, the international uh, standard athletic tracks, IAAF standard tracks, which we have done in many marquee stadiums. We have done recently for IIT Chennai. We have done for AFMC, Armed Forces Medical College in Pune. We are doing uh, the Salt Lake Stadium right now. So there are plenty of athletic tracks as well. 
But these are some examples within India. But coming back to your question, uh, we do, uh, we have uh, good installations already executed. For example, uh, we have done a FIFA standard field in Bangladesh, in Dhaka. We are currently finishing two fields in uh, Maldives and in Sri Lanka. Uh, we have done two athletic tracks in Mauritius. Uh, and we have done a cricket academy in uh, Kabul, in Afghanistan. Uh, one other interesting uh, achievement also has been, we have done 35 futsal fields in 35 islands of Maldives. So that, that's been a very pet project for the Maldives government. So we are very proud of uh, what we've achieved both in India and uh, internationally. According to you, does Indian sports facility meet the global standard? And if not, then what all needs to be done to match the international standard? Um, I'll answer that in two parts. Uh, first of all, yes, um, a lot of the infrastructure that's built in India to host an international event does meet the international standards. There's no doubt about it. But going forward, is that or should that be the focus of the government in terms of investment into just creating these, you know, these uh, huge stadiums where 90% of the investment goes into the whole structure and the gallery and the actual play area takes maybe less than 5 to 10% of the investment. We are completely reversing the model. I, I've been presenting in some seminars with, at, with FIKI and with CII and basically we are advocating the fact that do not build these big white elephants use that investment to do these smart sports infrastructure and you know you can probably do 50 such facilities that are taking sport to the people so uh, yes and no therefore the, there are very good facilities in india but that's not necessarily the direction that you want to go if a certain city is hosting a, a commonwealth games or national games understandable that you need to build certain things but as a general policy of the government uh, they need to really build smaller facilities that are uh, multi-sport in their application so we have models where you could do a, a, a 1 crore, 3 crore, 5 crore investment and actually do a better utilization of a 200 crore outlay, for example, that someone may have for one stadium. But we're also happy that you know, the government, the central government especially, is giving a larger focus and larger allocation of budgets to sports infrastructure. And the other good development is that the CSR spend for companies, uh, whatever they invest for or uh, contribute towards sports infrastructure is also now categorized as an eligible spend for CSR. So that, that's going to be another opportunity for us as well. For over 10 years, Great Sports Infra has endeavored to create excellent value for its customers through world-class products and impeccable service delivery. Here we'll take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Stay tuned in.